Want some candy? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. I'm all out of bubble gum. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. I hear you're looking for candy, man, bitch. Give me some sugar, baby. Like scary movies. Uh huh. Want some candy? My virus. All done. Ready to get into this? No. One second. What's up, all you unholy rollers? Welcome back to another episode of Monster Candy Podcast with myself, Screaming E from the Memphis Murder Men, and Oubliette Sparks is back from Tsunami Ball. We're crossing streams tonight. Again, I feel like I'm in some weird, like, poly horror relationship with you and Terry, crossing streams (laughs) separately. But we'll be maybe back we're together the same again. Person. Maybe, maybe. But we're back, and we're going to talk about um, Arkasha Stevenson's first omen, the first omen tonight. So get ready, folks. Before that, we're going to talk a little bit about some horror news. <laughs> Or news, you little fuckers. What do you got? I got something I've been sitting on for a while, and I don't know if you've seen it yet. But uh, this was weeks ago. Last month, actually. Uh, So werewolves that we were discussing a while ago. Um, Yeah, Mm -hmm. the... uh, It was some shots were released. And I was not too psyched on the werewolf design i was a little bummed out actually because to me it looked like do you remember that movie it was a few years ago where it was this younger kid like teenager and he kept on drawing these drawings of whatever this this monster this like shadowy monster but it kind of looked like all porcupiney had all these quills oh i see the picture yeah oh I can't remember what it was called. It's not Grim Death, Cuddy. Death Note, maybe? Yeah, it was William, William Defoe was the creature. Oh, was he? Death Note. It's based on like a an anime or a Right, comic. right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this does have that. Right. It's no. very like a crazed dog kind of spiky. Yeah. So I saw that and I've, I've been sitting on it because I'm like, ah, got to talk, talk with it about, talk about it with you, Oubliette. Yeah. So I just there there is a picture of it standing around a bunch of cars and the, the prof I mean the the silhouette looks kind of cool like the arms are really long. Yeah. That one close up is kind of vicious. But it's it's like kind of cute but like just gross What's that cute. Movie, Dog Soldiers is that it? I haven't seen it but I always see the fucking werewolves cover for it. Yeah. It's called something like that. It looks like that. Yeah. Very yeah, it's also a little bit dog soldiery too. So I don't know, man. I hope it's not because I was actually excited for this movie, but mm, designs designs are big, and it's also kind of giving off some like Arcadian vibes too. Just the way how long and lanky it is. I don't want to fucking talk about that Damn movie anymore. I know, I know. Um, and there's some he other random redeem himself, right? There's some other random shit that I saw. Uh, the monkey, Stephen King horror movie is gonna is dated for a february 2025 release based off of his book so we'll see how that goes a lot of these uh man just a lot of this newer horror is just not doing it for me did you see the sam raimi news today i did well i saw what's like non-news news news. right right yeah i didn't actually look into it all i just saw the headline so he's apparently all the headlines are like he's producing this new uh, directing and producing this new horror thriller called Send Help. And I read like three different articles on it and every single one waits till the end to say it's not even greenlit yet. Of course. <laughs> Which I'm like, glad this like, is in every fucking paper. Yeah. But they're they're describing it as falling somewhere between Rob Reiner's at Stephen King ad- adaptation of Misery and um passed away 
<laughs> I, know. I know that's that's the only reason that i ended up in, wanted to include it because since it's not greenlit it seems like whatever they're talking sam raimi might direct again but then with that description i'm like what yeah i mean yeah why why misery and castaway like yeah are they on like a deserted island maybe it better just not be a like someone obsessed with a writer on an island, right? Stranded. It's probably what it. I mean, be really dumb. It's 2024, and I wouldn't put it past that would be the uh, the premise of the movie. I mean, what else could it be if it's a if they're describing it as a cross between those two? <laughs> it's called Send Help, so yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. What else you got? I, that was it. Did you it was... see what Mia Goth's real name is? No, I didn't. Um, <clears throat> do you? I feel like. Do I want the is, illusion? This is going to be the next level, you know. No, this might like or step it up for you a little bit. Get more know. intimate. Oh, you're you know, like how when people know me for a while, I'm like, I'll tell you, you know, I finally let out my real name. And they're like, oh, so yeah, we're taking our relationship to the next level. Yeah. So I knew about one of the extra names because I thought it was interesting, but mm-hmm. I did not know them all. So her full name is Mia Gypsy Mello da Silva Goth, but it's probably Mia Gypsy Mayo da Silva Goth because she's, um, what, she Brazilian, right? Yeah, Brazilian. Crazy bitches. Sorry, mm-hmm. Brazilian. Brazilia. Sorry, Brazil, but well, she's you know it's true. Canadian too, and that's where the oh, humor comes in. Christ. <laughs> Two great tastes that taste great together. Crazy sandwich. A Brazilian mm-hmm. Canadian, yeah. Interesting. So that that was a little one, not really horror news, but uh, just special news. News. Special news for the kid. So you always do the cool toy stuff, and Ooh. I never really mention toy stuff. But there is a new Lego set that is Jaws, and it's actually pretty fucking cool. It's the boat, and it's. I mean, this thing's like, I think like 1,500 pieces. So it's like Jesus a serious Christ. Lego set. But it's, um, yeah, I just did a Disney Bones one that was like, I don't want to tell you how many pieces. <laughs> yeah. I bought it just because I like Disney villains and was like, yeah, on a rainy day, it'll give me something to do. Dude, guys, if you haven't done anything with Legos in the wild, they have progressed and their, <laughs> their sets are crazy. Like doors open and things pop out and it's like, it's fucking, it's a thing. Uh, but they're fucking expensive. Anyways. it's Dude, like, I know. Dude, like my my oldest niece, she's 16. And like she got into Legos because they're, you know, a bunch of Star Wars things where it's like fucking Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Darth Vader's head, like a helmet and stuff like that. She was getting into them. She's like, I want this. And then we were at Target Uh looking and I'm like, $70. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, no, there's like a this the first one I wanted that I didn't get because I got the Disney villains one and said it was like three hundred dollars. So like, that's ridiculous. Do that because it's not, it wasn't even cool enough to like glue it together and display in my house. It was just like right. It would be cool to build. <laughs> so the shit is like, getting no the simulation is getting out of control. And <sighs> it, I I even like debated it because I was like, well, you know, I can build it and then I'll take it apart and give it to one of my employees' kids and then they'll have something that maybe, you know, their parents wouldn't have otherwise bought them. But now, like when you, so I bought a different one, but the different one I bought that was smaller, uh, it had 18 different bags of Legos and the directions go by the numbered bag. So like you couldn't even like reverse engineer it for a kid right. and be like, and take it all apart and be like, here you go. Right. Unless you really sat there with the 400 page instruction booklet, by the way, going through every page and like taking those out and putting in the right number, which I'm a nice person and like giving things to people, but not, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so this one, I, I think I saw it was like 150 bucks, but it's a, it's, it's so like crazy. a flat rectangle of water, basically. I mean, there's waves in it, but the base of it is a rectangle and it has the boat and they're about to spear jaws and jaws is like almost completely out of the water hitting the boat like it's cool um yeah so if you're someone okay so it's 1500 pieces so if you're someone that doesn't mind spending like 150 dollars on legos um i will say this is one that you could 
display in your house like it looks cool you could put in a little shot right i mean you like horror it's neat. right i see how it could be justified but god damn that's a lot of money or if you have a kid who likes legos you could just buy it and say it's for them and build it with them and be right. like what i just got you a really expensive lego kit don't be fucking ungrateful i don't care if you like jaws or not build hey this with me. hey johnny you want to want to build and then you have a toy jaws today exactly yeah i'm free oh. no yeah shut up <laughs> Oh, this is fun, right? Yeah. I mean, it's cool. But yeah, toys are fucking... Some of them anyway. NECA is still just the best bang for your buck you're ever going to get. You know? Yeah. They're pushing at the heart of the the elder collectors. Yeah. The, The only other one I have, I don't even really want to talk about that much but i just want to tell you guys that you should um google a movie that was just greenlit called murder with the stars that is being done by the people who did full house and fuller house okay just let me know what you think when you read what you're gonna read you got it dude i'm excited (laughs) i'll have to check (laughs) it out (laughs) exactly i i just don't even yeah. Are the Olsen twins the murderers, the killers? No, they haven't even really talked that much about the synopsis, but just the people involved. It's just, it's horror is just so interesting. I mean, the movies in general are so interesting right now, but just the people who are doing, getting into it and kind of the screenplays they're Coming writing with, to yeah. get into it. Yeah. And I mean, we have to be getting close to, um, what is it? Screamboat Willie and all those fucking. Oh yeah, uh, I was just talking about that with somebody. Pinocchio actually. and mm-hmm. uh, there's a Bambi one, I think. There's yep. like and all kind of levels of budgets too. A couple of them that I was reading about actually, um, you know, will have decent, not blockbuster size, but decent size budgets. It's gonna be, right. it's gonna be interesting as a lot, like as a lot of this IP stuff becomes public because we are in a time where. Every year now, there's going to be some relatively big characters start yeah. to fall under public public domain, and um, yeah, it's going to be, you know, we talk shit about like all these remakes and sequels and reboots and everything, and I just feel like this is going to open a whole other fucking bag. It of absolutely of is. People not having to be creative and just being like, oh yeah, Donald Duck's fucking. <laughs> we can use him now. He's yeah. gonna live on a fucking tugboat and get angry and fucking stab people all the time i don't know it's just yeah well it to me it feels like it's gonna be fucking weird and everything's gonna look like ai yeah i'm just yeah that's the weird i'm feeling old right now yeah i'm feeling old well i i feel just that was that was one of the horror news there's some fucking ai generated horror movie everyone's freaking out about it'll probably be great too unfortunately (laughs) and it's probably a killer it's probably a killer with nine fingers Uh uh-huh and like 32 hands seven dicks know, yeah um yeah it feels to me like it's the early 90s again like when scream came about and then horror had this like mm-hmm. explosion for the next decade like i feel like that's kind of what's happening because like a lot of shit like the big budget there's starting to yeah. be a lot of big budget things again well and oh some God. of the indie stuff that's blown up like talk mm-hmm. to me was like I right mean, that was up there with every other movie in the theater at the time um but yeah, I agree, which can be a really exciting time for horror, too. And like, yeah, as we'll get into some of the different movies we talk about in this podcast, some of them actually turn out to be more impressive. Yeah. Than I mean, you I've know, anticipated because it, I really anticipate shit right now. Right. Anything to keep the machine running for us, you know, but it's always yeah. it always ebbs and flows. You know, it gets that that big bubble and then it pops. And then out of that, you get a bunch of crap but then out of all that crap you get some really like ingenious type indie stuff where you're like oh shit here we go like this is awesome horror again so it's it's life it is there's circle just, life man yeah i just there's definitely an insurgence of like slow burn artistic stuff that yeah and and hey i like maybe like 40 percent of it 30 percent of it and think it's great but like the rest of it is just so masturbatory and like fucking pretentious and not even as good as the people who were doing that in the 70s and 80s no. and it's like you've had all this time and you can't make a fucking art flick that's interesting shit. like 
and yeah, then they make Skin and Marink, an hour and 40 minute movie that's fucking garbage. I still <sighs> haven't watched that. Or, you don't need to. Uh, what is it, the TV set glow? Or why is the TV set glow? Uh, yep. Yeah. What's it called? Oh, uh, Terry really wanted to see it. I wonder if he did. Oh, it's, oh, I mean, did... I have it on streaming. I just am, I'm like scared to push play because I just don't want to. What is the name of that? I don't want the, it's like, the TV set close, right? I don't know. Let me see. But anyway, yeah, you're you're right. It, it, there's this. I, I saw the TV glow. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that Which either. Which I think is another A24 or close to it. Maybe it's Neon. Might be it's Neon. Neon or A24. Or I, think it's, I think it is Neon. But it's like about teens who start watching a show that like i guess goes south or whatever yeah alternate reality i don't fucking know it could be cool the synopsis sounds like it could be cool but everything about it makes me think it's going to make me angry so, yeah I mean, there's definitely a good chance feel of that. free to message us if you've seen it and tell me if it will make me angry or not and don't lie to me yeah i don't, I don't even trust people anymore because there's so many people out there that are like skin like rink was awesome i'm like oh you're lying it wasn't there's like nothing oh, in it to I, make I it feel, awesome. I feel so to blame for you watching that because I was kind of like hyping it up about what yeah. I heard. And I was like, I'm going to watch it today. And then you text me and like, I'm watching Skin and Rink. And you made some comment. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm not going to watch it. Now. Yeah. Well, everyone else was like, <laughs> oh, man, it was like, it was crazy. Like, that's the thing I kept hearing, too. It's oh, it's crazy. Like, it's so unnerving and unsettling. And I'm watching, I'm like, well, when's that part going to fucking come up? Because it hasn't happened, and I'm 45 minutes into this fucking movie. And then I was an hour. And then I was like an hour and 20. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm done. Anyway, you got anything else? Nope, I'm just, I'm here. All right. That's well, what I, got. That's I, what I, got. I ain't got anything else either, so that's been... It's horror news. Yeah. All right. The first omen. Let's get this summary going. <coughs> a young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, but encounters a darkness that causes her to question her faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. Yeah. Yes. That's an accurate description. Not as exciting mm -hmm. as the movie, in my opinion, but we'll get to that. Um, what do you want to start with? The likes or what we didn't I want to like? talk about what I liked about it. All right. The floor is yours, Oobzilla. So I was very apprehensive about this film mm -hmm. because of things we just spoke about in Hoa News. Yes. Uh apprehensive because there's lots of reboots there's lots of prequels there's lots of sequels yada 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 uh most of them aren't aren't great mm -mm. this movie to me felt like a movie from the late 70s like in like the that, movies of that time yeah it definitely did a better job uh that than most did um i think that the Parts that they went graphic with were appropriate to go graphic with. Mm -hmm. um, I, I liked the colors. There were lots of shadows. The movie was never bright. Um, it always yep. kind of had it the wasn't. look of a rainy day, mm -hmm. you know, which I think for these kind of foreboding films is really important. Um, yeah, at least during the night. I think there was only one part where it was actually like sunny. And that mm -hmm. was at one right before the lady the one nun hung herself they were in the courtyard yeah, but, but aside from I, that but that's kind of appropriate because it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes you like it, it kind of like kills that foreboding dread like dread feeling you have and makes you feel like oh yeah. we're gonna get a happy scene and then you're like no yep we are not um <laughs> i feel not like doing that for this being the director's first film i think it's incredibly impressive um she also co-wrote the screenplay which i think is cool Okay. Uh, I think that movies tend to be better when the director has a part in the writing. Yeah. Um, just because it stays true to the original intent instead of just somebody reading it being like, oh, I, I have my own impression on what we need to do with this. Like they went in 
I have my own vision with her co-writers to do yeah. it like and write it the way that she probably wanted to see it done which is smart especially for um your kind of first because mm-hmm. it is her first film right i mean i've never heard of her before or at least first mainstream film i'm gonna say that now and watch she's done some like crazy blockbusters mm, yeah um she did a short vessels in 2015 yeah, no, this uh, is her, I think this is her first Legion in two th- the TV series. But she wasn't a director, I don't think, in Legion. It says director. And then... Oh, was she? Brand new cherry flavor. I did like that. Oh, interesting. So I didn't watch that, but mm-hmm. I was going to because a couple of people showed me some scene where it was like a sex scene with gills. Right. It was something really fucked up. But anyways, <laughs> I've heard I've heard it's it's fucked up and it seems like it might be worth watching, but so Well, this is a, yeah, this is her first theatrical release. Yeah, first movie, yeah. Everything else is series or shorts. So Yeah. So, I mean, first off, agreeing for your first full length and big theatrical release to be a part of the Omen franchise is fucking cuckoo pants and to even be willing to do that is taking on a whole fucking lot because that could be a very, very bad way to come out in the film. Oh yeah. (laughs) So um, I think that she played that smart. I think that this is, this movie feels like it's in the Omen franchise. After I watched this, I watched the first one and the second one that same week, like they felt good and cohesive together. They gave the same emotions, the characters, and kind of the level of evil people were, I think was really matched. Right. Um, They did a good job um, with the time period and being historically correct, like with the stuff that was going on at the time. I think it was great. The the main actress was one of the reasons I decided to watch it, even though I thought it would be probably a pile of shit, was the main actress was also one of the main actresses in Servant, which was an M. Night Shyamalan (laughs) series. Um, that I watched because I was curious. It had Rupert Grant in it, who I really like from Harry Potter and um, the actress from Six Feet Under. It had just a great cast. And so right. I was curious to see what Mr. Shamalama Ding Dong would do in a TV setting and to see if um, his application would be better or worse than in movies. Dude, uh, and yeah. I was going to say, this goes back to what we were just talking about in horror news, but a lot of these new directors and new movies are definitely better suited for like a series or like a Mm -hmm. part of, you know, an episode or whatever, just like, um, in a violent nature. Like if that would have been a fucking 25 minute episode of whatever creep show. Yeah. You'd be like, okay, yeah, cool. But so well, yeah, and it, and it was actually interesting to see M Night Shyamalan do something like that because I feel mm-hmm. like it 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 is because it kind of makes them compartmentalize into these episodes, right? Because even if it's telling a continuous story, each one can be its own story. So it makes them put all the crazy shit mm-hmm. they want to put into forty five minutes to an hour, and it makes for a really entertaining forty five minutes to an hour. Well, yeah, since it's a, taking that same shit and drawing it out. I'm sure right, it's a it, lot more work for them in the long run, but it's the product's better, better because the, yeah, they sent they ultimately have more time to add more story into the totality of the episodes as far totally. instead of like, OK, I got this hour and a half movie or two hour movie. I'm going to write this fucking novel of a movie and try and totally. put it in there and you're just like all oh, this shit's not making sense why would you do this and yeah 100 so, yeah. and plus it it helps that my favorite word of 2024 it helps <laughs> them create lore yes because if you lore. have an eight to ten part series and you have eight to ten hours if you really care about these characters this much and want to tell your beautiful fucking story yeah. Now you actually have the way in which to do it that won't bore the shit out of people because, again, you can compartmentalize and hit it in parts. And if it's that entertaining, they can walk, they can stream the whole thing at once. And yep. That's their fucking day. But it doesn't force everyone else to sit with you for three hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, so the main actress in, or one of the main actresses in Servant and kind of the main protagonist, really creepy 
nanny kind of cult supernatural person was the main character in this and I thought she did such a good job in servant of being this like weird religious character that I was like I think she would make a good nun and kind of play into this uh she she's a great actress she played it totally differently than I would have thought she did in this but um but yeah I felt like the movie had good pacing enough happened they didn't do what a lot of new movies do and just add a whole bunch of gratuitous kill scenes to like keep the ADHD sort of current right. watchers into it. They did it where it should be and where it was applicable. Um, and honestly, the most gory things in it were childbirth and they probably wasn't <laughs> like, yeah. and people, and a lot of people should know that childbirth is gory. So like, whatever it wasn't, it's funny when I, I kept hearing about the, the birthing scenes. And then when I saw them, I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks okay. like babies. Yeah. Yep, that's what happens when fucking when creatures come out of other creatures. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I liked all that, and I thought the acting was good. Uh, I thought that the peop- like the main actress who was American, read American. The ones that were supposed to be Italian, read European. Like I think that they did that really well. It wasn't a movie where you're gonna see a bunch of people like doing wrong accents or overacting tropes like the tropes were there but I feel like I feel like they did it in the right level of the Omen franchise yeah they're like hey a bippity boppity we're nuns oh yeah well like the one slutty one that spoiler alert ends up (laughs) being a satanist um like that whole scene that to me like reads so much into those uh horror movies of like the 70s right. and 80s and it was like perfect and she she was you know a trope but it was done like in such a good way like those movies back then where that like it didn't just read as like oh this is so fucking cheesy it just to me it brought some nostalgia kind of into well, it it so. definitely set the tone and gave you the impression of like, okay, she's American. They're definitely Italian. Like you could tell and people's accents yeah. weren't going in and out or being like, mm-hmm. wait, is that, is she, you know, it was very clear who was who. So yeah, they did a good job doing yeah. that. Yeah. And even the way they wrote mm-hmm. the characters, like they mm-hmm. all had, you know, very, they were definitely characters of where they were from. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I like this too because I think that like for a younger artist, a uh, younger audience, this is like, like a great movie to show someone. And if they are entertained, it's something that maybe isn't as jumpy as other movies. Like it'd be a good gateway into Rosemary's Baby and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because if you like things like this, you might be able to go a little more uh, toned down. I guess. Right. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Or classic. Agreed. I Agreed. I liked it. They didn't make it like Scream. They didn't 90s it out or 2000s it out. Like it, there wasn't a bunch of yeah, crazy it, CGI. There was a couple things, but yeah, there's there's worked. some things for sure. But yeah, I agree I with you. I think it was like a good looking film. Mm-hmm. Everything they did Cinematography was good. Was solid. Yeah, that was good. Um, they did a good job of setting up the vibe with anticipation and you know, like oh shit, some dread here and there did a good job with that and also like i mean the slutty friend kind of a giveaway totally um, but for people like us who have seen right, a lot of right. stuff i think maybe not for everybody right but. right um but that being said the character was still good and needed to be there I, and i think like for me overall it was like an adequate sequel to the omen now and you know prequel. like prequel yeah, yeah prequel which is fine like everything's good you know i don't really have any huge issues with the movie so i think i think overall it was an adequate adequate prequel and fit into the universe but the things i didn't like about it was mostly in uh, this kind ca- this was a much better film than the one I'm about to say, but it kind of had the same ending, not, not the same ending as far as like how it was written, but just 
kind of how it progressed as the Pope's exorcist, where like everything kind of gets kind of actiony. And the same with the nun, too. It gets to yeah. a point where it's like, like I think everything after, like right before they were right before the car crash. Like they could have mm-hmm. cut a bunch of stuff out after that and just had her get taken to wherever she was going to go to, you right. know, they're like, we're going to deliver your baby. And then, you know, right. there's just a lot in it. And part of it's just because how movies are shot nowadays too. And the film's better I, and just everything. Yeah. It's just like, it's kind of hard because they're like, all right, we want to get these, cr-, which I'm assuming if the technology was today what it was back then they probably do the same mm-hmm. thing and it would end up looking they'd be like sure. oh we could do all this shit so they kind of get and i'm like oh I, for me it would be better if it was more simple because it would it'd be creepier is what i'm trying so, to say but there's one thing i have a question actually for you mm-hmm. so because i think i interpreted something completely wrong at least from what i read today because i was doing a little bit of I just read like the IMDb trivia page because I always like seeing the interesting stuff. Yeah. So, but but another one of my friends commented on it after she saw the movie. So I remember, and maybe I'm misremembering, but in the first one, they when they dig up Damien's mom, it's jackal bones. And you find out that he was born of a jackal. Right. So <clears throat> I saw when a friend comment and a couple of different people comment saying that they got rid of that storyline. And then the trivia on IMDb says that they did a gender switch because the male was the jackal or the devil. So I didn't read it as that. When I saw the end, spoiler alert again, when I saw the jackal, what I thought that was was a symbolism and it because it was burning and the place was burning. Right. So they were going to, and since she ran away to the cabin, I was thinking that she was going to bury the jackal's bones in a grave so they would think she hmm. was dead. Because I felt like that was completely implied since she was kind of off the grid right. after that. And then that would totally play into the fact that there was these jackal bones when they tried to dig up her grave later thinking she was dead. You know what? I didn't even think about that. The IMDB under the trivia says they gender flopped it and that the jackal was a male and that was who was banging everybody and getting them pregnant right but i don't think that was it i think it was symbolism i see i don't know because i know they kept well because they had or if it was they still killed the jackal and put that jackal in the grave right so right it doesn't fuck up that story you know what i mean right right yeah there was definitely it was there were things that were different like i said the whole storyline because there were multiple girls getting pregnant that were mm-hmm. just coming out and having like these fucking like, you know, uh, Mut- mutant s- babies. sloth, yeah, babies that were like, oh, this one's this oh. one's not good, kill it, Blech. you know, until they get a good one. Um, so yeah, see, I yeah, I, I didn't even really think about the first one. I didn't think about the bones at all, but now that you mention it, that. Yeah, because remember, even the dad says at one time, he's like, and Damien's mom was born of a, or Damien was born of a jackal. And it was like this dun dun dun, you know, part of the movie. Hmm. So to me, especially because the off grid part and you see that jackal in flames, the place goes down. I was like, obviously, she's going to make it look like she died there and she's going to take those bones and bury him. Yeah. Well, see, that was this again, I think, suffers from what a lot of movies do is there's like too much story in it. So things kind of get a little a little funky. They get a little wonky towards the end with the continuity. Because even with the jackal right. part, like that's that read more. I mean, I know it wasn't, but it read more as like the devil. But it was a jackal. Right. No, 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 no. I'm agreeing. Yeah, it was. But I'm saying just how it looked. Like it wasn't like we have this fucking kind of grotesque evil jackal. It was like yeah. this big, huge fucking monster. Right, which yeah. is totally cool. But I'm like, yeah. But to me, when it showed up, like, uh, it had like a more maternal protecting thing. Right. Like, I felt in that scene. I didn't see it as this like scary, crazy jackal. I felt like its posture and everything about it was more like, I'm here to help. Right. Well, yeah, because I mean, just, I don't know. No, because it was kind of like. Just a feeling. 
Right. It was kind of like watching her like get out of here. It it kind of had the vibe that it was being obviously kept, you know, against its will. There were times there were for sure times where I thought, oh, it's like, oh, let me out of here. Like I'm like sad that it was being kept captive and made to do this stuff. So I could totally see what you're saying. And then there's another another part about that is it showed that it had hooves. It showed mm-hmm. its feet at one point, right? So I'm like, yeah. But in the first omen, the jackal had hoofs, right? I don't know. I, I don't know what they got. yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I knew it wasn't the devil, but to me, it just presented as more of like a demon, as opposed to sure. a jackal. Um, and what what else? There was there was something else that bugged me. <laughs> oh, I mean, I know you know. They give you like oh, day passes. Wait a minute. Damn it. Uh oh. What? But also, the nun is the daughter of the jackal. So she's half jackal. So maybe when she dies, she turns into a jackal. Yeah, maybe. They did a weird thing at the end where they're like setting up a, another prequel before the omen or like possibly a sequel after the omen with having the two kids. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's weird. God damn it. God, thanks, Oubliette. Now I'm completely fucking tortured. And there's just so much inbreeding because, like, the jackal is Damien. I guess the jackal is Damien's grandfather and father, but then his mom's half jackal. So right. He's three quarters jackal and only right. a quarter human. Devil human. Right. Human, human, yeah. Yeah. See, that's why, that's why it gets a little wonky. Yeah, I got to stop thinking about this. I just got to, no, I should have just watched the damn movie. You should have just watched it. Um, the other one of the other things <laughs> that was like not confusing because like I said, I you know, you I guess they get day passes or whatever, but well, okay, I guess it doesn't now that I think about it, because they were all because <laughs> the nuns were in on it, like they were trying the they were the bad Catholics. Were all the nuns in on it? No, but just the head nuns but were not like right. See, that so because it was too, confusing was me. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it was confusing me the whole time. I'm like how are these fucking nuns just going out and being able to party it up dressed yeah. like they were not just like, Oh, we're going out. They were dressed like fucking like they were walking, like they were working girls going to the discotheque. Oh, I know. And they weren't jumping out of a window and like crawling down like Mm-mm. bed sheet. They were just walking they were like, out the front just... door. Like, yeah, we're going out. I was like, wait, what? Which was crazy. But I guess since the fucking, Italian broad was part of the whole not to catch him. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, Oh, just let him go. Cause we're trying to get this one pregnant so he can bring about the fucking thing. And I will say that actress did a really, not the Italian one. The main actress did a really good job in that scene. Um, portraying, portraying someone who usually doesn't drink and party and like all the phases that would get her to what. Right. Right. For sure. Cause it was like super believable and they like played into everything that like a, kind of sheltered version would be like, oh, maybe, yeah, this isn't that bad. This is fun. Right. But. Yeah. Yeah, I thought she did a good job. The just grooming. In general. Yeah. And I also thought, like, her living, like, again, where it gets all, like, action, action movie E, her running <laughs> and stabbing the fucking priest and running out with her other baby. <laughs> and obviously they're doing it because they want to set up some sort of sequel. So I get yeah. it, which again, how does she run away, end up owning a farm and living where they're not going to find her, or at least yet, or for whatever period of time, because the girl was like 12 or whatever, her daughter. Um, But I'm like, she should have just, it would just, it would have been a cleaner story if she would have just died. No extra daughter or whatever. They took the son. Here you go. It's way less, way more seamless transition to the omen. Um, mm-hmm. so that bugged me a little bit. And now the whole fucking bone thing is stuck in my head. The bones. Now I'm like, what the fuck? See? Um, but listen, if you're half jackal and half human and you get killed, like you might go back jackal, but, but no, 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 because the gravestone of the mom and the years that the end of the movie take place, she's right. still fucking alive. Mm-hmm. So somebody took it. Somebody found a goddamn jackal and put it in that grave. Yeah. 
And I don't think it's continuity error because I feel, I deep down feel like that a woman who's never done a full length movie and she takes on a giant project like the Omen would actually think about things like this. Cause I will say that if I could, <clears throat> I don't usually like separating sexes, but there is a certain thing that I could see her feeling like she's in a boys club and really having to make sure that this like works in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like filling and just stepping into like that kind of thing. But now I'm curious as to like what she thinks happened or what she wanted us to think happened. Right. Well, maybe that's maybe that'll be explained in the next one. Because it might be cool. Yeah. Maybe they're setting it up. That's true. Maybe. So it's, it'll be like this is the first prequel. And then there's going to be the sequel to the first prequel. But we'll still be either maybe happy happening you no know, what have to happen before so it'd be another prequel to the first one to the first omen so we'll see we'll see but yeah i mean it like the end just got a little got a little silly for me um but all in all i thought it was a pretty a pretty solid movie you know it didn't knock my socks off or anything but i i was way more surprised watching this than i thought it was you know gonna be i was like oh you know this isn't this isn't as bad as i thought it was gonna be hmm, good, so good for you no it was a fun little watch yeah yeah i i, I definitely didn't uh it was definitely no the pope's exorcist or whatever new I wish, I or wish the, exorcist the pope's exorcist believer like that. right i still haven't watched that Dude, i mean you don't you really don't <clears throat> need to that would probably be like a zero candy corns it's just is it that bad? It's just not. There's no point in making it. That's the thing. There's like it's a pointless movie that, like, I have zero understanding on why you would make that movie. Mm -hmm. Aside to just like try and you know start up another franchise off the Exorcist, but yeah, I mean, I I would stay away from it. And then the other just little, just nuisance type thing was. I mean, it's always the church. You know, the priest is like, oh, sure. we're we're the good Catholics or we're the good Christians and they're the bad ones, which which is like a theme, though, that I've noticed e, in a lot of movies. E, e. Let's <laughs> just look back on history. No. At who has not, killed the most people and done the worst shit? Catholics. I'm not saying I'm not well, saying it's it, starting. The tides are starting to turn on that. Yeah. Recently. I think numbers are getting up on yeah. some other religions. Well, but Catholics I'm saying, had it I, like down pat for a while. Right. <laughs> it I'm not saying it's not, you know, kind of historical, historically correct, but just with a lot of the movies now, like that's the, the trope. So you're like, when it happens, it's not kind of shocking. You're like, oh yeah. So they're trying to bring about, you know, the end of the world to bring everyone closer to Christ. That's also kind of happening in the boys mm -hmm. theme too. And then it's, I forget, there was something else I was watching where that was also the theme where, oh, I mean, well, Preacher, which funny is, I never knew this, but was written by the person that does the boys, the same people. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well, I was, cause I rewatched the whole season of Preacher and I'm like, oh yeah, this is just like the first omen. Like the church is doing all this shit. Because everyone's become godless. So then you, then you got to do some quality control and get everyone back to worshiping the God, Jesus Christ. But aside from that, the movie is fine. I was not disappointed in watching it. And I, I agree with you. It, it could be a good gateway movie into horror for a new generation. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else to add? Um... There wasn't much I didn't like other than some of the points you hit on, like the the slutty nun being a little obvious. But again, I think if somebody's coming into the Omen series and doesn't really know what's right the history of it, they may not catch that and just be like, oh, girls go to nunneries and act wild before they, <laughs> yeah. before they become I mean, nuns. It's like it's like a rum springer, you know? Dude, I was just going mean, to say that, yeah. It's like a natural thing that <clears throat> that people do yeah i was starting um, to question i'm like i never you know I, I was around a lot of nuns when i was young just in general because there's a lot of nuns back in the 80s and i was like i never knew they 
they were able to do this over there in Rome. But yeah. Um, but as far as like it all going back to the church, like as someone who has uh oh wow, actually like most of my tattoos are Catholic. <laughs> I just realized, <laughs> I just realized That's funny. my two newest my newer ones are too. I mean imagery versions yeah. of some, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> but I you know, as a like rebellious, you know, late teen uh 20 something when people would ask why i had like you know the immaculate heart or the sacred heart and all mm-hmm. this stuff and i and they because usually people would make comments like oh are you trying to be rebellious and i'm like i'm like yeah most people get tattoos <laughs> of the devil but instead i get tattoos of real fucking imagery of people that people believe in that have murdered so many yeah. fucking people I was like trace everything shitty it all goes back to the fucking catholics <laughs> like, yeah <clears throat> but you know nowadays it can go back to so many different people and religions mm-hmm. in general yeah so well you know humans are humans be human and that's how they roll yeah humans be human and they believe in, <laughs> in deities and killing people because well, of that and all kinds of shit getting like angry it, about all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff dude it's, Dude, it's I had to throw times. somebody out of a Tracy Bonham show in Woodstock in a Woods venue last week. How was that? Should this be how we end the podcast? Sure. It's, it's, it's actually a pretty good story. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's actually this cool venue that we've been vending at in Woodstock. It's like, it looks like a cabin with all these windows. It's kind of like lemony snickets. It's like an octagon. <laughs> it's really, it's neat. And like all the doors open and there's outdoor seating, but you can still look into it. Mm-hmm um it's a beautiful space they they mostly do classic music and jazz but they've been trying to get like a younger audience in and tracy bonham who had like a pretty big 90s hit with mother mother um is local and so they had her play as a trio um so you would think like you know, usually it's like an old like much like a very old crowd there but they're they're cool um, but like a couple of vans roll up from people with old folks home to like see, oh, right. you know, classical music, nice. and jazz, yeah. you know, the shows are early. Um, so this one, uh, um, oh, no, 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 not jazz <laughs> like that. Like, uh, oh, like jazz fusion, like <laughs> my jazz <laughs> flute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Anchorman jazz. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of times it makes me want to die, but, <laughs> yeah. um. But there are like, there's some orchestras, piano players, whatever. There's some, everyone's really talented, but anyway. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So basically we open this like concession stand with snacks, wine, beer, and then like dinner if people want it, maybe an hour and a half before the show, we shut down. The show goes for 45 minutes and then they do an intermission Mm -hmm. before the last set. So we have like 20 minutes to like serve anybody who wants anything. Right. Uh, so people line up really quick and whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I don't even think it was intermission. No, it was. Mm, yeah. So at this point, we have a line of maybe like three couples and one single guy. And we're finishing up an order. And after that order is done, nobody's like walking up. Right. And there's like a couple of people who are probably in their 60s. And the husband is like cut for his age and he's probably like six three six four mm-hmm. all jacked up and on testosterone yeah and then there's this single guy in one of those like fixie gear rider hats they all mm-hmm. wear you know like those soft the little, yeah the little hats. Bikey, biker hats yeah but then with like an outfit that doesn't match that and he's kind of like he's short like five two and kind of hunched over and <laughs> gives like like speedy vibes you know yeah but anyways the woman I'm working with and I just look up and we're like, who's next? Mm -hmm. And immediately the shifty little one is like, go and looks at the older couple and like does the whole hand movement. Right. Move getting real fucking spicy. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the older man is like, no, like, I'm sorry for whatever confusion there was like, go ahead and go. Right. And the little one's like, no, (laughs) I'm not fucking going. You're first, right? You're fucking first. Go ahead and go. Go, 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 go. You're first. And so this guy. Extra sassy. 
Oh, and he's flipping them off and doing this whole thing. And this guy, like, even though he's giant, not even losing his cool, is like, all right, you know what, buddy? Like, I'll go, but I would love to buy you a drink. And I'm right. sorry for whatever you thought happened. And if you right. want to go, go ahead and go. Like, this dude is being so nice. Giving him every the option wife... to, like, chill the situation <clears throat> out. Yeah, the wife's being quiet and kind of, like, weird. So I, I immediately know whatever happened happened between the wife and this little guy, mm-hmm. right? I think you can just tell because right. she's like visibly kind of annoyed her husband's being so nice, but at the same time, whatever. Right. He's trying to make amends. So the couple comes up <clears throat> and they're standing like right up at the front and they're ordering wine, whatever. The guy turns around and is like, are you sure I can't get you a drink? And the guy just like looks up from his phone and stares at him like a fucking psycho and like oh does the hand shooing thing again. <laughs> so I'm already like. I, I I'm already like I'm not gonna fucking serve this guy because I right. can't. Like, there's no there's no fucking right. Way. Yeah, he's just being a dick at this point. <clears throat> yeah, and I I can't. I am that person that will make an example out of you. Um, so while the man's ordering and he like I said he's super tall and his wife is not at all. So I don't even think he hears what's going on. But I hear someone say whore. So I look oh, up and it's the little guy, but he's looking at his phone and like I said, he kind of had a speedy vibe. Mm -hmm. so i'm just thinking maybe he's so riled up that he's just like fucking cussing you know right so i give him the benefit of the doubt and then i hear you fucking cunt so then i stop serving and my counterpart's still serving them and i'm just staring at him and he still hasn't looked up from his phone so i'm like maybe whoever he's texting like still trying to like right the benefit of the doubt then he i shit you not he walks up two steps and goes within an inch of the woman's right ear away from her husband oh. and right in the back of her ear goes, you fucking bitch, you're going to pay. And I was like, nope, nope, you come here. And he's like looking at me and I'm like, you come over here now. Wow. Like trying to call him away. And he's like, yeah, I'll take a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> I know you won't. And I was like, is that a joke? And he goes, excuse me, I will take my wine. <laughs> <laughs> How old was this dude? So he was a hard 29 or a young 40. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, and um one of so those I'm still people. keeping my compo yeah. So I'm keeping my composure, but I'm like, I'm like, no, I called you out of the line and over here not to start a second line. I just want to let you know that you will not be served right. tonight. <sighs> and he's like, looks at Sherry, my other manager, is like, I'll take a glass of wine. And she's like, No, like, we're not serving We're we're not joking around, dickhead. And he's like, so you're discriminating against me. And I was like, how how am I discriminating against you? And he's like, you're fucking ageist. What? And I was like, I'm ageist? And he's like, you're being nice to all these old fucks and treating, treating them differently than me. And I was like, well, I'm treating them nicer than you because those old fucks offered to buy you a drink apologize let you go in front of them if you wanted to and you proceeded to call them uh bitches cunts and horse and got so close to her that i can't believe she didn't slap you and she didn't and this poor woman actually like shuddered and got so creeped out like she grabbed her husband's like pant leg and was right and so this fucker (laughs) takes out his phone and is like holding it by his armpit like i can't see him recording recording you yeah yeah, yeah. And he's like, I need to talk to a manager. So this concession stand is a wooden box. Like, there's no way anyone was anywhere other than us. Right, like, right. I almost we are the manager's to... dick. Yeah. Well, and usually it'd be two teenagers. So it was right. actually funny that there were two, like, executive Adults, level managers yeah. in there. <laughs> but I almost oh, wanted to fake walk down the stairs and be like, <laughs> oh, like, hold on one That would have been awesome. <laughs> I wanted to so bad, but I was like, I'm not going to do this. That would have been Although maybe then it would have gone viral. Um, So like her and I both raise our hands and he's like, well, who's the senior manager? And she points at me and I keep my hand up and he's like, there's no fucking way. And I was like, well, my business cards are right there. And he's like, I'm I'm just going to inform you now that I've been recording. And I was like, yes, I see it. Your phone is (laughs) pointed at me and holding it. And he's like, what's your name? So I'm like, I tell him my full name. I tell him the name of the company. And he's like, and you're saying you're not going to serve me. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, great. I have that on record. You're going to go viral. And I was like, cool. So is that still recording? He's like, yeah. And I was like, so I'm not only not going to serve you today, I'm never going to serve you. 
And if you ever go to Phoenicia Diner, you're never going to be served there. Yeah. And that's it. And he's like, <laughs> he literally screams like bloody murder. Like, why are you doing this to me? And I was just like, because I feel like you've been acting like this your whole life and you've never had your ass beat or you've never been made an example of. So sounds like it. I was like, honestly, it's really sad that I, the only time maybe you've made an example of is at a Tracy Bonham concert where right. she's playing violin in Woodstock with a bunch, with of, a old bunch of elderly people. people. Jesus, fuck. Uh, but yeah, he like ran off saying fuck you. And then he goes to his friend who was like far away from him and was like, they're not going to serve us. And I heard him. So I walked over and was like, I'll serve you, but I'm not serving him. And he literally like grabbed his friend by the collar and was like, I have to get you the fuck out of here. I can't believe I brought you. And like, as he's dragging him off, he's like waving his phone like a lasso <laughs> being like, I have gold here. I have gold. You're going to go Going viral. Yep. You're losing your job. I have your ass in my hand. Like just this whole just thing. And I was like, thing, yeah. I was like, okay, sir, thank you so much for coming. And the whole time I'm thinking like there's fucking people without clean water and you're like willing to die on this fucking mountain. And there was maybe five total people in line. Like I said, this fucker, like he went off that hard. People have lost their fucking minds. 30 seconds of his life. 30 fucking seconds. And then, oh, I forgot like three other times he still tried to get me wine while he tried to get wine for me while he was recording. Like, okay, so can I have a Sauvignon Blanc? And I was like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you no. (laughs) Like, listen, dude, no. Like you're You're not being being served. And he's like, complete asshole he's like even though you're on the internet right now and i'm recording this and i was like yeah dude you literally just called a woman a whore a cunt and a bitch right in her face like i'm not and declined her husband's every attempt to fucking fucking de-escalate the situation like even if that woman was like a total cunt to him and was like what are you doing here low class Um, right first Her husband was cool as shit, tried to shake his hand, tried to buy him a drink, tried to let him go first and like chill out whatever yeah. possible menopausal crap was going on. Like, <laughs> dude, life is too fucking short. Life is too short. It was so, ugh. Dude, well, like, that's... I hope I see him again. I hope I walk in the diner and he's like mid pancake bite just so I can just be like, smack nope. it out of his, hand. out of his hand. Be like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Like, you are a shit person, dude. Like, just I as can't. he's putting the fork in his mouth, slide his plate off the floor, off the table and onto the floor. Be like, you got to go. Be like, why? Like, dude, I remember you. I yeah, mean, the pe- second he leaned in and like I saw the third time when I was like, oh, he's saying this shit to her. I was like, that's so my fucking moment. crazy. Not all superheroes wear capes. I'm fucking taking care Hell of this yeah. shit. But it was as he left, like probably 80 people were like, yeah, oh, yeah, good. <laughs> dude, the people have lost their fucking minds nowadays, like over everything. That's why, dude, I tell everyone this. Oh, the United God. States, we have it so good. We're so soft as a nation that like we need to make things difficult. So there's some sort of conflict and adversity Uh in our lives. Like every, like even, I mean, don't get me wrong. He couldn't even believe when I match. I didn't didn't even match his energy. He couldn't even believe I went after him. Like even when I said you called a woman that cunt and bitch and a whore, he's like, oh, and you're a manager of this place. And you just said those words. Right. And I was like, yeah, I was repeating what you said. Oh, yeah. I didn't say those words to like at you. <laughs> I'm oh, saying them because you just said that. Dude, years ago, years ago, when my old shop was over in Oakland and I was just a manager. And at the time, or I, I wasn't even a manager. It was my girlfriend at the time. She was the manager. We're doing something. And, you know, weeks before some lady comes in, buy some stuff, like a younger girl, probably in her 20s ish, whatever, buy some stuff. Oh, I'm going to Vegas. Like everyone had a good time. It was last thing at night. You know, we're helping her get all these clothes, whatever, and tell her, we tell everyone the policy, you know, you got whatever, 30 days or whatever it was, but the tag's got to be on if you want to exchange them. And we only do uh, exchange or store credit, right? She's like, oh yeah, cool. No Mm -hmm. problem. Like being cool as shit. Comes back however long after the uh, the time limit. Tags are off. She's like, yeah, I want to return these. Like, uh, do you have your receipt? And I think she had the receipt, but the tags were off. So she obviously wore the clothes mm-hmm. in Vegas, whatever. And was trying to give them. We're like, oh, we, uh, you know, it's past the whatever 30 days. Um, and the tags are off. So we can't, you, know, you can't exchange it. She starts like flipping out. And then, we, you know, my girlfriend at the time, she's trying to be cool. She's like, I mean, I can give you like store credit, but just this one time. 
but other than that like that that's all we can do and she's she wants her money back and just starts making this huge scene starts saying like and i'm in the back like hanging shit or doing something back by the dressing rooms and she just starts like going off just letting loose i'm a, i'm gonna fucking knock all this shit off the counter and blah 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 like and that was like after like 15 minutes of just like arguing and i was like you know what no you're not you're getting the fuck out of here i just look at her i'm like you gotta go you gotta fucking go she's like what i'm like you just said you're gonna knock a bunch of shit off the counter and you was like no 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 and this was like when probably maybe the second year we were in living here in california so like i'm still mm -hmm. all east coast shit like that doesn't fucking say oh, you yeah, start yeah. threatening people yeah, like that doesn't fly you're yeah. out of here you're gone and then i'm like you get right. the fuck out you know and then so I kick her out and then some woman who was in the dressing room comes out. She's like, you know, you really shouldn't use that kind of language towards her. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah. you Californians are fucking weird. You guys are goofballs. Like the fuck? Well, here's, the, here's the fucking craziest part. So we're in Woodstock and admittedly, like, you know, I had a restaurant there and some of the older people would be so fucking mean to the teenage staff that I had to step in all the time. And right. a lot of these are the same people that were probably like around at that. And after I, I let that had that thing with that guy almost every woman who was older and at that show and even some of the men came up and were like oh, i'm just so impressed with how you handled that i would have been so intimidated like mm -hmm. i didn't know what to do like blah blah but then in my head i'm thinking like well that's why he acts that way right because you guys are probably assholes to other people but if mm -hmm. they if someone just like goes over the top aggressive they know that you won't do shit and like now we're breeding this shitty culture of like, how can we just fucking go off so quick mm -hmm. that people get spooked and don't know how to fucking react to it? Oh, yeah. Where yeah. like, I'm sorry, but maybe it's because I'm an older sibling and my fucking brothers were crazy and just the shit I dealt with. But that that shit doesn't scare me. I mean, I will say when I was walking out to my car, even though it was hours later, I was like, because he seemed kind of like he was doing some uppers. Yeah. I made sure that none of the cars parked by mine had somebody in them because I'm like, this seems like the kind of dude who would just like. Well, yeah, that's the thing is people have get no. Get spun out and like come back yeah. up and be like, whatever. They can't but... process anything. There's no like coping mechanisms. Yeah. They're like, I'm mad. And then you pissed me off. So I'm going to come back and fucking put a brick through your window or something fucking dumb or shoot you or whatever it is. And you're just like, Jesus Christ. Like, oh, totally. get a grip. But it also. It also reminds me of like the three and four year old age where you just mm -hmm. start crying and parents yeah. are like, why are you crying? And they're just like, I don't know, because they're mm -hmm. going through so many emotional changes. Right. Like, that's what this dude was like. But it, it did. I did think it was crazy that all these somewhat like seemingly like strong minded older people would be like, I mean, I can't believe you did that. Like, we were about to call the police. Like, da, da, da. but then I thought about it, and it was funny because, like, at the last part of it, I mean, we had a counter between us, but he was definitely close to me, and I was like, I'm not fucking stepping back because this dude sucks. Right. But, like, even that big dude, like, all the men around, like, nobody else stepped in and were like, hey, buddy, like, don't talk to her that way. Or, right. You know. Well, dude, shit's crazy now. You know, they're probably thinking, like, oh, he's going to pull out a fucking knife or a gun and, shoot me if i try and sure. stop him you know sure people, but when i saw him do that to the woman especially at her ear all i could think about was like and my husband's hearing sucks but i was like if my <laughs> husband was next to me and he heard that like yeah and i don't think he's been in a fight in 30 fucking years or whatever but like he would have fucking gone well, yeah. ballistic it's because you know and gen me, xers and somebody older sure. millennials in the early 80s I, they're like we don't fucking fuck around with that shit. Like what the fuck. So but also yeah. if I was in the line and like the second he said the first thing I would have looked back. Second thing for sure. Third thing right in my ear. Right. Yeah. If I didn't punch him in my purse, we at least <laughs> knocked him fucking a couple feet out of the way. Uh huh. Cause I don't want to go to jail for really hurting someone, but I'd knock the shit out of yeah. somebody with my purse. If did something like that. Yeah. You at know, least kick him in the chest. I don't know. Something. But yeah. It's crazy that like, that happened and nobody was willing like no one was going to stand up or say anything they were going to let this guy just like have his fucking fit well it, also people were and probably that's scared why he does that yeah because they're like i'm gonna dude, put you tiny. on the internet this dude this guy was like 125 pounds wet like he was tiny and squirrely and spun out like he was a wild card for sure but in no way in his skinny jeans like he had no weapons like, on him yeah 
people would just be he didn't have shit up. like yeah everything's just fucked up now everything's just fucking know. weird it was just like uh he was he was I've damien been, i've been looking yeah i've been looking my name hasn't been tagged my business hasn't been tagged no. maverick concerts hasn't been tagged there haven't been live if, videos if anyone sees anything send it to me because i would love to see the video yeah everyone out there listening like keep, keep track <laughs> keep an eye peeled um we'll go on we'll go on tiktok and stitch it so i can the, tell uh, yeah. my side of the story awesome <laughs> and then um, it can go viral <laughs> yeah. so uh, back to the movie how many candy corns are you giving it i'm gonna give it a three. Ooh, okay i mean i don't i don't disagree actually it's good yeah it's like if, if i'd watch it again i think there's parts i missed because i was a little sidetracked through part of it it had a good feeling if i was watching tv and it came on i would totally watch it right again and uh if they make another one that's another prequel or an addition i'd probably watch this before i watched yeah. it again so for me that's more than a lot of movies all right, all right. I, I i can dig on that i'm gonna give it a two nunny candy corns just because it wasn't like for me it wasn't bad it wasn't great it was good it was adequate so you know i wouldn't be upset if they made another one it was definitely the best of the you know weird churchy exorcism -y things that have been coming out now the real religious movies so as aside from uh our favorite the uh dark and the wicked and then when evil works Dude. was also good but isn't that person doing something new soon they are supposed to but i haven't seen anything like any updates or anything so yeah but it averages out to a two and a half which is really good for us it means you should probably go see it i would say go see the movie if unless you're really like into russell crow and you think those movies are awesome then i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it might be the complete opposite you'd be like this movie sucks russell crow rules but we think you should go see it so with that being said anything else before we get the fuck out of here to be back. Yes, it is, and it's good to have you back. Oh, so, with that being said, everyone, thanks for tuning in again. And check us out on the next episode of Monster Candy Podcast. Later, you little nun Like scary movies. Uh huh. Like scary